Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining me for the Daily Tech Roundup. There have been a couple of interesting developments, as usual, in the tech slash gaming industry, so we're going to jump right into them. The first set of bits of information, I guess you could say, would be from AMD, specifically revolving around their next generation APUs, also known as Raven Ridge, which of course are powered by Zen. And we're also going to get into some offhanded remarks from Rajal Kadori about his possible interest for AMD to pursue low power GPUs for mobile and then we're gonna shimmy right on over to camp Microsoft and we're gonna discuss a conference that was held at GDC called DirectX 12 Advancements and this one's actually quite interesting because there's a vSync fix for uh, UWP applications, some shader model 6 information, HDR and other bits and pieces which we'll go into uh, in just a moment. So first things first, we might as well talk about Raven Ridge APU. So I guess I could give you the Cliff Notes version first. The Raven Ridge APU is of course going to be once again powered by Zen, and this means that the whole chip, this has been confirmed, will be 14 nm and will feature next generation HBM technology. Now that the actual APU itself is not going to be released this year, it's going to slip into next year. We don't exactly know the date, so I can't tell you for the sake of argument it's going to be released February the 22nd or something like that. But we do know that it's looking, at least on paper, to be fairly impressive. Now obviously the benefit of it slipping into next year is the fact that it will have full access to high bandwidth memory 2 chips. Currently, as you are aware, HBM2 is going to be kind of limited until the fourth quarter of 2016 where finally we'll have access to up to 8 gigabyte DRAM chips and then in 2017 obviously production will go even higher. Now I think it's fair to say that the APU in question, Raven Ridge, most likely will not require 8 gigabyte DRAM HBM2 chips because let's face it it's going to be a customer variant uh, it's going to be a consumer variant rather and it's going to have about the same power of the playstation 4 slash xbox one so realistically it doesn't require that amount of memory bandwidth you could probably make do with a very low clock hbm2 chip by itself without needing to stack it or potentially even a hbm1 chip would potentially suffice this is quite interesting and considering we do know that AMD are pushing a lot of work towards APUs at the moment, supposedly there is going to be a 16 core x86 Zen, which is capable of running up to 32 threads, which is pretty damn monstrous. And you can somewhat get an idea of where they're going as a company. Now obviously the fact that Zen is going to be replacing the excavator cores with about a 40% improvement clock for clock compared to once again the excavator cores, the fact that you're going to see simultaneous multi-threading and other shiners, it means that those APUs are going to be rather interesting propositions for a lot of companies. I wouldn't be surprised, and this is part of a different discussion, if we did see the next generation of PlayStation, whether that's the PlayStation 4.5, or whether it's going to be the PS5, or whether Sony is just going to rename the damn brand, which, let's face it, that's pretty much commercial suicide at this point. People and, well, people and, uh, well, PlayStation are pretty much synonymous with one another when you come to gaming. But anyway... I wouldn't be surprised if Sony were considering an APU powered on a Zen based um, a Zen based APU, but obviously we don't know. I do want to go into a very brief discussion with some offhanded comments from Rajal Kadori. Now he is of course the Senior Vice President slash Chief Architect over at AMD's Radiant Technologies Group, which just in case you're not familiar, that is the company which are basically responsible for all of the production of the GPUs over at AMD. I think you kind of know that. Now, he has said, and I quote, AMD could make a mobile GPU as part of a partnership or licensing deal, but they are otherwise no active plans to build end products for mobile devices. So what he's basically saying is, yeah, if someone wants us to do this, and pay us and give us the license and all of that shiny stuff we're happy to do it otherwise we're not just going to be like hey you know we're touting for business we're touting for business now it's kind of ironic because back in 2009 amd made a bit of a boo-boo 
Um, they basically sold its mobile division, which is called Adreno, A-D-R-E-N-O, which, by the way, stands for an acronym of Radeon, don't you know. Um, they sold their division to Qualcomm back in 2009, which didn't work out so well for them, to be honest. They instead should not have done that, they should have licensed it or what have you, because let's face it, Qualcomm are worth a few pennies. They're, you know, they've probably got more in their bank than I have, let's just put it frankly. So... I personally believe that was one of the big mistakes, but let's face it, every company has made a series of mistakes. I mean, that's just kind of the nature of it, because you're human, but I would probably say that's one of the absolute biggest AMD have uh, actually made. But anyway, the bottom line is AMD's GPUs technically are perfect for this. They are essentially fully moddable. You can add in as many GCN units as you want. And with the reduction to 14mm and all that stuff, they could certainly produce a pretty a pretty competitive design. And naturally, on ARMs slash socks, each hardware block is not always done, but is sometimes done by different companies anyway. For example, you could have MediaTek doing a CPU, you could have let's say imagination doing the gpu you might have a network card or the chip done by someone else this is not always the case sometimes you do have someone doing everything but in this instance it's just quite interesting now do i think that's a good option well yeah um admittedly amd would not have the 14 nm advantage because qualcomm have already shifted over to 14 nm uh, that was one of the Adreno 500s. I don't remember which one. I want to say it was the 530, but I don't want to give you misinformation. And I believe they are also, because Qualcomm are supporting the Vulkan API, as you probably are aware, that probably means that that GPU is going to technically support it on a hardware level, which is kind of interesting. Speaking of supporting things on a hardware level that should have been addressed to begin with. Let's move over to Microsoft, shall we? So you might recall that I recently wrote an article regarding the problems with Windows 10 and a monopoly. One of the main criticisms I had with that was the fact that Microsoft are omitting certain standards which should be, well, standard. For example, the fact that their programs are often black, uh, black box excuse me, in nature, and the fact that that also means that not only can modders not fix problems, but Microsoft as a whole are kind of crappy when it comes to patching issues. But to Microsoft's credit, they appear to have taken some of this on board during GDC 2016. Not necessarily with my comments, but just the community as a whole. Uh, DirectX 12 Advancements was a session being held by a couple of folks over at Microsoft, Max McMullen, as well as Chaz Boyd. Uh, they are the principal development lead and also the program manager, respectively. And they've said that they are looking to fix the issues of the enforced vSync on UWP applications. What does this mean? Well, there are a couple of new flags in the API, which of course, once again, are for UWP. And those flags essentially allow tearing. This means that a monitor can alter its refresh rate dynamically based upon the workload of the GPU, which in turn means that FreeSync and G-Sync work. Huzzah! It's almost like it should have been like that to begin with, don't you know? On a serious note, it's kind of crappy that they did not think of that with UWP. There are other problems with UWP, which I have spoken about in quite a lot of detail before. But Microsoft are promising that they are going to discuss more about this at Build. So, once again, as I said in my video, which was criticizing Microsoft and uh, Windows 10 in terms of the black box nature and all that crap. The fact of the matter is, I'm not necessarily saying you should chase Microsoft with pitchforks and, you know, torches raised high, I am saying that you should be very vocal to them, say, I don't like this. Uh, this is, by the way, as either a developer or as an end user, you should say, look, I don't like this. Here are the reasons why. Here's what my concerns are. Could you please fix it? 
because essentially they are a company that are looking for your money. And ultimately, if they know they can sell more of the product by essentially pandering to your whims, they're going to do that, right? Makes sense. At least to me. Anyway, I do want to touch on a couple of other subject matters rather than just, you know, verbally based Microsoft for the next couple of minutes. Um, in some information regarding Shader Model 6. It's going to be coming, everybody. We don't know all of the details yet, unfortunately, because Microsoft are being a little cagey. Once again, a lot of this will be unveiled supposedly at build, but it means that we're going to get support for wave level operations, 64-bit units, and other shiny stuff. Doesn't need me to tell you that it's going to require the latest Microsoft Windows version and also the latest GPU driver, and Microsoft are targeting a feature level of 12.8. Zero plus for the hardware, which is unsurprising to absolutely zero. Now, I do find this little Easter egg rather interesting. AMD recently put together an event. It wasn't Capsation. I can't remember what it's called, but I believe it was either early last year or late. No, early this year or late last year. That makes more sense. And one of the things they were discussing is that. They want to work with monitor companies, companies who produce monitors, that would make more sense, um, to go HDR, high dynamic range, for colours. Just, if you're not familiar with what HDR is, the brief version of it, the Cliff Notes version, is that it basically means that you're going to get a greater range of display or displayed colours. So, currently, a a monitor puts out about 16.77 million colors the idea is that you're going to have a much wider color gamut which means you won't get color crush what that means is let's say you get areas with large amounts of bright spots on screen for example explosions or uh, sparks or lens flare or maybe a combination of all of them against let's say something really dark let's say space in this case well you might get instances especially on older displays where quite simply details will be lost it won't be let's say for the sake of argument that this was to happen in what well, i don't know why i keep saying bloody mass effect andromeda today but let's say that it was mass effect andromeda and you are once again in the middle of a space station you saw this explosion of a ship against stars in the background and all this other crap and you see flames and sparks and you know the lens flare and the michael banging and all of that well reality is if you were actually really there you'd probably a be pissing your pants and b you would be thinking "Ooh, those are pretty colors and maybe you know probably concerned about all the people burning but still you would at least be thinking "Ooh, pretty colors in however media that we're watching some of that will be crushed you might see the sparks being essentially drowned out by other colors and that's not what we want microsoft therefore are pushing for larger color gamuts and it's rather interesting that Microsoft are wanting to see higher, both higher peaks of brightness and also larger color gamuts because this is what to them they believe is actually more important than 4K. Well, not necessarily more important, but they believe it will spread to customers faster. And they think that the adoption rates of TVs are going to be actually higher for HDR than what they might be even for 4K. And this is particularly true for PC monitors. And it does make some level of sense, because when you think about the amount of GPU performance you need to render 4K compared to just higher color values, it kind of makes sense, right? One last thing before I let you go. Uh, Microsoft are also reiterating their, their, uh, their commitment for PIX on the PC. PIX, is, by the way, is Performance Investigator for Xbox. Regular viewers will know that that's essentially a development tool which allows, well, developers to know what is, I guess you could say, taxing in this particular scene. For example, are textures causing a lot of swapping in a scene, or is a piece of geometry too taxing for the Xbox? In this case, it could be that if a developer is trying to figure out, hey, for medium settings, we need to know, are these textures too big? Are they not possible to render on like a 4, uh, sorry, a 2 gigabyte GPU? And with Pix, it would be much 
better for doing that. So that's kind of cool. Anyway, there are a couple of links in the video description. Link A would be for the Raven Ridge APUs if you want to go ahead and check that out. And link B would be regarding the DirectX 12 Advancements talk. So if you want more information on that, you can also check that out. As usual, I thank you very much for watching this video, especially if you've managed to make it all the way to the end, which would be about 15 minutes and something by now, I imagine. And I also very much would appreciate it if you like the video, share it with your friends, your buddies, your co-workers, your significant other, others, depending. And, well... Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.